G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I might be down, but I'm not out. But even though I'm operating on one eye at the moment, my right contact lens is out. Uh, it has to be out for four weeks before they can do the cataract surgery. And I've been pressing on, working with, you know, just the left eye, which is, a <laughs> it's trickier than you think, because your eyes act like a rangefinder, you know, you've got, it's a bit like the old dam busters, you know, where they came down and they bombed that dam and they used the two lights to set the height. Well, your eyes work in a similar way that when you've got two eyes, they both work out the depth of field. And uh, when you only got one, it's not as, not as good. It's, it's tricky to get used to. Anyway, I thought, screw it, I'm not going to just sit around doing nothing. I'll be working. So I'm working on this. What is it? Well, it's a bit of scrap aluminium I picked up recently. And I, uh, yeah, I was pleased to get this with some other aluminium. And it's actually, I think it's a microwave horn or part of a microwave horn. You think, what good's that? Well, I got it from melting it down. But it's, and it's heavy, it's quite good. And I've just put some rubber feet on the bottom of it and then cut the base off of it to make it all usable. The plan is on the top, I'll put a metal plate on it. And then I'll, I can put my magnetic ball type camera mount on it. So that'll act like a, a small tripod, quite solid. And I'll be, use, be able, I'll be able to use it on the bench where the big tripods won't fit. And I can also, even though it's quite heavy, I can also put some, a, a hunk of steel on the bottom of it to really give it some, some heft. And I've got three feet on it. I've made it three feet so it's, it, it will self-centre. You know, if you have a base for a tripod, you don't want it just round like that because it will wobble all over the place. But, but having a three-point setup, it will always find its own... Uh, level. So there's a little trick for you. So yeah, I'm going to work on this. I've got the, bo the bottom done, put a metal plate on the top and it'll be excellent to shoot in on jobs I'm working on from the side. Now I've just got by for years and years and years using a really old Yashica tripod that I've from the 1970s and it's been a great tripod. The only problem is that when you're getting close with it, you have to have the legs fully extended otherwise and locked in position otherwise it's not rigid enough. So I thought, you know, I really need a better tripod and I got a modern tripod with my Lumix FZ 300 camera that I picked up second hand that was like a $700 camera that I got for 250 bucks off a of gun tree so that was a bargain and I bought that purely because it's got mic input so that you can speak to the camera and have a microphone have a remote microphone can't do that with my old Nikon that I've been using for forever you know which is a fantastic camera and I'm using the Nikon to film this so, yeah, anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. I was looking on Gumtree, which is a bit like Craigslist, and there was a really nice 1970s professional grade tripod. 50 bucks negotiable. Rang them up, and I, because I thought, you know, I really need a tripod that has got the type of base where you can extend it out to whatever you want. It's got bracing, and it stays rigid, you know. You don't have to have the legs fully splayed. So I rang up and said, have you, you know, still got it? Yeah, uh, what's your best price? 40 bucks. I thought, that's pretty good. Because, I mean, if you go and buy a tripod of that quality now, new, you're going to be talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Yeah, you can buy good quality second-hand tripods from the 1970s and 80s which are absolutely fantastic. I'll show you what I bought. Now this is a Velbon tripod made in Japan. It's all metal apart from the plastic on the handle grip of course. It's a bit like my Yushika, that's all metal as well. No plastic clips or clamps or whatever. 
made in Japan. It says it somewhere. Made in Japan. VGB3. And I looked up this on the internet and VGB3 apparently is professional stand. High, highly regarded. Built like a tank. Rock solid, nice and steady. Not this flimsy plastic shit that you get these days. Well, I got my Panasonic. The guy threw in this plasticky tripod and it was the greatest heap of crap ever. And the camera was good, the Lumix FZ300, but the tripod was rubbish. So you've got... So the beauty of this type of tripod is that you can have the legs in any position and it's really solid. You don't have to have them fully out like you do with the Yashica. So this is... And it's all metal, all aluminium. I and mean, that's bloody brilliant. And I wanted a pan and silk head. I didn't want my ball heads because you can, when you have a pan and silk head, you can keep your horizon level. It's, uh, it's the way to go. It's got to wind up and down. Um, center thing. Goes up a hell of a height. It's bloody brilliant. 40 bucks. 40 bucks. Can you imagine that? I saw another one advertised for a hundred bucks. Same thing, same model, exactly. So this is the one you want. The later Vilbon stuff isn't a patch on the early stuff, I don't reckon. It, it, of course, you get what you pay for. But this was top of the range in the 70s. And anyone that wants to do YouTube, this is what you should be looking for, for a tripod. Solid, whoops, a bit of lock on, I suppose. Yeah, solid. All metal, no plastic shit, and it'll, uh, it'll outlast you. Like that is super duper fantastic. I'll put the, the uh, Nikon on this, and I'll shoot my old Yashica. You can see what I've been using for the last oh gee, nine or ten years, I suppose. I've been doing this for a while. It's my original tripod. You can never never have too many tripods. Now, this is bloody brilliant. Now this is the old Yashica I've been using for years, it's an ST3. These are collectible items like all the Yashica gear. And it's lightweight. You see how the legs flop around? You have to have the thing fully extended and then they, they work on a taper and then they lock in. And then it's nice and solid, even though it's very lightweight. And so it's just got the regular pan and tilt and that's all you need. You don't need ball, ball headed things and all this racket. You want to keep your horizon level, so you pan and tilt. That's the way to go. If you want to get into to YouTube, this is what you should be getting. Now, once again, as I said, cheap. I paid 30 bucks for that. 30 bucks. And it's a quality, all aluminium tripod. You know, you spend 30 bucks, you wouldn't buy a tripod for 30 bucks now. And if you got one, it'd be a heap of rubbish. But this is all metal, pretty much. And it's brilliant. It's, I actually love it to death. It's fantastic. So, there, there you go. That's the latest purchase. The Velbon, Velbon tripod and Yashica. So, both from the same period, 1970s. And, uh, yep. Yeah. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. There you go. I might be down, but I'm not totally out of it. And uh, I'm still planning ahead. So two tripods now instead of one. I've got the small unit for uh, benchtop work. I've also got a small Yashica travelling one, which I can use but I've been using it with a Yagi antenna on it for my for a Wi-Fi link <laughs> so it's not really readily available but uh, yeah pretty, it's a pity you she can stop making camera gear because they made really good stuff I've also got an Electro 35 Yashica Electro 35 which is a collectible unit which I bought from a guy a friend who was in Vietnam during the during the Vietnam War and it went all around and through all the action got it's got a bit beat up but it still works so yeah yashica stuff really good gear and early velbon top stuff okay so that's it for me
I might be down, but I'm not out. I'll see you next time. Cheers.